Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Welcome back to the channel. We have just finished watching Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest Episode 3, and they dropped a lot of crucial information on us in this episode. Yeah, hey amen. We say it all the time. What a time to be an anime fan. But in this case, what a time to also be a subscriber of this channel. I'm not going to lie. It's always a movie when we get to do these. But especially when we get to watch Fairy Tale. I'm not going to lie. This episode was actually really chill, really nice. Like, the speed of it was, or I should say the pacing, was rather really nice. Like, I loved how they progressed through everything. And like he said, all the information that they kept dropping on us left to right to left. Like... It was just fantastic. Hell yeah. Like, first things first, the elephant in the room, the newest fairy tale member is extremely dangerous. We just got the confirmation that her real identity is Toka the White Mage. She's the one who took the water god, His she took his powers away. And according to Mystigan, she has powers that are rivaling Zeref, or she's as dangerous as Zeref, or whatever the words he used. That's kind of crazy. I don't know about all that, but she's dangerous. That's what we can say. Yeah, like, she's definitely dangerous. Like, I will say it was definitely interesting seeing old boy track her down, especially just because, I mean... We just seen Gajil and Juvia go after her for like the last two episodes while Jalal goes guild to guild trying to see like exactly what can she, what exactly is she, just to find out she's exactly who they're looking for on the other side. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what to really make of this because assuming Jalal's conversation with her doesn't go really anywhere. I don't know who's going to force her back, especially if she's really that dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Like, because Team Natsu needs her in order to get the Water God's power back. But she is far as shit from where they're at. So it's like, like how would exactly? someone bring them? Because, yeah. like, I highly doubt Nick. First things first. Team Natsu, I don't even think they have any way of knowing that she's the white mage. All they got was the word. So it was like, it's not like they're about to just go all the way home to back to fairy tale, scoop her ass up, and then come all the way back. So it was like, there's a lot that I'm wondering now how they're going to connect. Yeah, exactly. Like, let alone, I'm wondering, because the only way it kind of makes sense to me is if she took the other dragon's powers too, but... I don't think that's the case. Because I'm thinking, like, maybe everyone that's not in the 100-year quest fight her. I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know if she's, good, like, a threat just from her personality. Like, that's kind of what makes this all really interesting. Because it's one thing if she was, like, a villainous type of person to where it's like, all right, yeah, we got to slime her out and force her back in. But... She doesn't even seem like an enemy. She just seems like the white mage. Yeah. And that's the, like. That could just be a low key thing, like a side of her personality on some new way Harme shit. Like she could be low key, very demented and just has a good way of showing, not showing it. But color me impressed then because you see what i'm saying yeah, yeah yeah like she when they revealed who she was she had a different kind of look in her eye but i don't really know how much to just judge off of that i would assume like obviously jalal's not a, just some liar nigga but at the same time it's like it's kind of hard to see her being this crazy powerful witch that lived for a hundred years that's on Zeref's level that's kind of crazy to imagine so I think the Zeref's level was an overstatement. Just because of who Zeref is to the verse, he's more than the boogeyman. Like, that nigga is literally deaf itself. Literally, to the he's verse. walking deaf. Like, assuming from what we know, we're assuming that the water gods, dragon powers, or all the other dragons, the five dragons, we're assuming they're all on the same time as Agnologia. So, 
I would assume she's on that type of timing, which I mean, still pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, hundred percent. But I'm really like kind of trying to draw that connection because they're so far away. Like, and if she's really that strong, this little group Gajo got is not beating her. So it would have to be all a fairy tale. But even then, it's like I don't really see them like, like how would that work? Like. Once, what are they gonna say? Oh, you're the white mage. Let's all attack. Like she seems like she's chilling. Like it almost feels like Jalal's about to follow up by saying, "Oh, I didn't know you were chill like that." Yeah, like I'm really. That's curious. literally what happened with the water god this episode. Literally, like, cause he was on some different shit, and I'm wondering because she apparently took the water god dragon's powers. I wonder if she was looking for Natsu to do the same thing. Maybe. Like take his power. I don't I don't know, bro. This is kind of weird trying to kind of piece this together. Yeah. Nah. Either way, like it's definitely a puzzle. Hell yeah. But all in all, this was a very interesting episode. They gave us a lot of info about the water god dragon and his little dilemma. He can't die until he gets his powers back. And the person who stole it infiltrated Fairy Tail. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And with the Dragon Eaters fighting Team Natsu. Yeah. Got a lot of smoke. But all in all, if you had to rate this episode, what would you give it? I give it like a 9.4. Like you said, it was quite literally a lot of smoke. From the smoke dragon eater to the sword dragon eater to the other nigga. Like, they were really just rocking out. We got to see Team Natsu rock out for a little bit, too. Don't really know what that was with Urza, but at least before she submitted, it was nice to see her in the field, just as always. Like, she really, every time I see Urza rocking out, she reminds me how badass she really was. And then you want to keep it going. Like... Other than that, there wasn't too much craziness that happened. It was just information. But we say it all the time. Information is golden information. Like, all information. So, I'll take it. I'll take mm -hmm. it. So I would say this was a 9.4. Okay, I'm kind of right there with you. I give this episode a 9.4 as well. Like, it was nice seeing some real smoke. Because I was wondering, like, the beginning of the episode was so anticlimactic, how they just split up like that, let alone the fact that the water god dragon was chill like that. Yeah, like, like who would have thought? Nigga, was, he was big bullying in, the, in his temple. Whole tea, we find out that Toka took his powers away. And I'm kind of glad they made that connection because now the rest of fairy tale can get involved in this arc but at the same time i don't know how this is gonna connect exactly yeah but i'm right there with you they gave us something to work with and something to look forward to let alone the fight scenes were lit the the dragon eaters are pretty broken it seems the ash dragon the sword dragon cutting urza's strength yeah is interesting that's like a Perona thing. Yeah, like, literally. Like, that shit look... I was like, that shit is broken. Like, she could just do that to anybody? Mm -hmm. But very interested. I'm very interested to see how Team Natsu's getting out of this one, especially Natsu getting hold, landing on a boat of all things. He can't even stand up to fight this nigga. Yeah. But all in all, it was a very interesting watch. All information is golden information. I'll definitely give this episode a 9.4. Yeah. Let us know in the comments, just in general, how are you feeling about the hundred year quest fairy tale being back and all? And also how do you feel about this episode? Vice versa. Share this video with a friend. And make sure you hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. Make sure you hit the big red subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss episode four of the hundred year quest or any of yes, our other sir. special videos we drop straight bangers on this channel so make sure you guys tap in with us with that being said make sure you guys click on our description there'll be two links waiting for you one will take you to all of our socials sons of tokyo on every platform the other one will take you to our discord you feel come me? on in come on in you know what i'm saying join that discord come vibe out with us talk about anything anime non-anime sports movies it don't matter but uh 
Yeah, man. With that being said, S-O-T-L.